Hi everybody, Josh Corman here from bookriot.com once again to recommend some books for the Read Harder Challenge. The task I'm going to focus on in this video is the LGBTQ task. Now I took this task fairly broadly, including reading a book by an LGBTQ author or, or whose characters or subjects fell into one of those categories. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into three recommendations, three books that are very different from each other. The first is by James Baldwin, Go Tell It on the Mountain, his first novel, uh, a book that I first read in college, the book that introduced me to Baldwin. I've since read a couple more things by him, uh, mostly nonfiction. I just recently finished The Fire Next Time, which is a collection, I think, of just two uh, essays. One is a long letter, I think, written to his nephew uh, about his experiences and thoughts, musings on race in America. Go Tell It on the Mountain has many of the same overarching themes particularly the idea of the intersection of religion and race in Baldwin's experience. He actually became a Pentecostal preacher at a very young age, went through kind of a battle of wills with his stepfather, who was also a preacher, and who regarded him coldly and abusively in many instances. Now, some of Baldwin's other works, like Giovanni's Room, deal more explicitly with homosexual themes. But in this case, I didn't want to showcase a gay author only writing about gay themes because it felt like, to me, sort of limiting. Baldwin had a lot to say very eloquently about a lot of things. He was a brilliant writer of fiction as well as nonfiction, and he laid forth on the issues of the day very broadly, and so I didn't want to kind of constrict him to just a narrow topic simply because this is the LGBTQ task. Now, that said, go read everything you can get your hands on by Baldwin, one of the great American authors. He knew everybody and interacted with so many people uh, during his life who were major historical figures, major figures in the arts and culture. And so Baldwin was kind of at the intersections of a lot of really important social cultural events during his day. And all of that experience really comes through in his novel, dealing with the tension between, very autobiographically, a young black kid who grows up uh, in Harlem where Baldwin was born and has to deal with all of the challenges and difficulties uh, pertaining to that in the time period, the 40s and 50s on into the 60s. And you can tell from this novel why he ended up being such a titanic figure in the discussion about and the execution of the Civil Rights Movement. Go Tell It on the Mountain is a novel of race and religion and family and social change and how the coming movements that Baldwin faced when he was a young man uh, in America uh, Go Tell It on the Mountain is also one of my favorite things in literature, a Bildungsroman, one of these coming-of-age stories uh, that traces not just the character's interaction with all the external conflicts that face them uh, as, as part of their involvement with the world and their interaction with the world, but also with these questions of identity and growth and how you live with yourself and face yourself and kind of become who you are through those trials and tribulations. So if you've not read any Baldwin at all, I think starting here would be a great choice. If you're more the nonfiction person or want to branch out into that, The Fire Next Time is an excellent book. Fairly short, you can knock both of these out uh, actually pretty quickly, but they're both great introductions into who Baldwin was and what was so great about him as a writer. Uh, the second book I want to talk about is one that you've probably heard a lot about in one place or another. That's Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. Alison Bechdel wrote this graphic memoir about growing up in rural Pennsylvania with her kind of tyrannical father, Bruce. She explores a lot of really heavy stuff in the book, including her realization that she was gay, the difficulty that she had in coming out to her parents, her father's closeted homosexuality, as well as his death and the incredible amount of tension uh, that existed in her house. The title is a play on words, ironic. Uh, her father also worked at a funeral home, which plays into the title as well. There's a ton going on. Uh, a lot of the events in the book happen and then happen again with different information and new stuff added. You get to see things from a different perspective and understanding that comes either with a new experience or with being older, with having some additional piece of information changes the perception and our understanding of those events as Bechdel tells them. Now, the reason I say that you might have heard of the book is not only because it's been critically praised and lauded in a lot of circles, and it has it won awards when it came out in 2006 and has continued to get a lot of critical attention as kind of a trend-setting book. And so that's one reason that you might have heard of it. The other is because it seems to get challenged all the time. It's been challenged at the college level. I think the College of Charleston in South Carolina is one noted case where uh, students didn't want to read the book. There was an outcry from the community because the book features those dreaded homosexual themes. 
I think Duke University possibly has seen some of the same uh, concerns from students, complaints from students, and the challenge uh, of whether or not the book should be taught. It's been removed from library shelves in different places, which honestly, in this former English teacher's opinion, is a sign that it's probably doing a lot of stuff right. The last book I'd like to talk to you about is a memoir written by Jennifer Finley Boylan called Stuck in the Middle with You. The subtitle is A Memoir of Parenting in Three Genders. Now this book is about Jennifer's transition from male to female and the process of raising two young sons while that transition was happening. Her experience with that, her kids' experience with it, what she feels that she understands about parenting and herself after going through that transition with her two young sons and about their perspective and how they have been affected by that and ultimately uh, the conclusion that she comes to that they've been made into better young men because of it. Now obviously we're having kind of this moment with transgendered people where Caitlyn Jenner's transition and the public notice that that has gotten along with things like Amazon's series Transparent winning awards, Laverne Cox being on Orange is the New Black and being a face for transgendered people in that realm. And I think that books actually have a really important part to play in these moments when social change might either start to happen or get further entrenched or really get the ball rolling. And that's because books, you know, you'll often hear them called empathy machines. And that may sound idealistic, but I found that it's pretty true. If you can get somebody to open a book and authentically engage with the subject uh, of that book, you are going to make a really big step, I think, towards affecting their perception about that person or that group and this book, because it deals with almost a fundamental human experience, childhood and parenting are a part of so many people's lives that you're approaching this memoir about and by a transgendered person, but through the lens of a really common experience. And I think that that's something that gives this book a little bit of an extra edge uh, and makes it the kind of thing that can really change some hearts and minds. Now, it may be naive to think uh, that, you know, a book can do that, but I happen to be naive and idealistic when it comes to books. One other thing that makes the book really interesting is that it's not just a straight memoir. There are a bunch of interviews that are kind of interspliced throughout the memoir portion that talk to a lot of other fairly well-known people in some cases about some of the ideas and thoughts and experiences and struggles that Finney Boylan has. And those, I think, also lend the book uh, an extra dimension that makes it not only more enjoyable, but also more thoroughly affecting and interesting and educational. There you have it, three recommendations, three books that are fairly different from each other, all things considered. And, and whether you read one of these three or another book to hit the LGBTQ task on the Read Harder Challenge, let us know about it. Tell us in the comments below the video here, share what book you have chosen to read. Uh, or hit us up on social media, tag those posts with the hashtag Read Harder so that we and other people can check out what is being read and enjoyed by all of you challenge participants. I hope that you're enjoying the reading as much as I am. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.